Hello, and welcome to Simpson Strong Ties introduction to joist and beam hangers. After watching this video, you will be familiar with the basic terms associated with hanger installation, and you'll be able to identify the differences between typical face mount and top flange hanger installations. You'll also learn how to install joist and beam hangers correctly, and you'll be able to understand installation features of some of Simpson Strong Ties joist and beam hangers. You will understand the differences between hanger designs and the differences between correct and incorrect hanger installations better if you're familiar with the following terms. In the frame of a house, a beam is horizontal to the ground. A beam supports or carries another member, such as a joist. That is why a beam is also called a carrying member. A beam can also be supported or carried by another member, in which case it is called a carried member. Beams are also called headers when they sit above door and window openings. A beam can be made of solid lumber, one or more ply of two by lumber, or a variety of engineered wood products such as structural composite lumber, abbreviated SCL. Joists are similar to beams in some ways. For example, in the frame of a house, joists are horizontal to the ground. Also like beams, joists can be made of solid lumber, one or more ply of two by lumber, or of a variety of engineered wood products, such as wood eye joists. Joists, which are supported by beams, support floors or ceilings. A joist can rest on top of or be attached to the face of a header or beam. That's why a joist is also called a carried wood member. The dimensions of a joist are stated in terms of width, height, and length. Note what dimension is the height because it is important for correct hanger installation. An I joist is a joist with a section that looks like the capital letter I. It consists of a top and bottom flange and a web in between. The flanges can be made of either solid lumber or SCL. The web is usually made of either OSB oriented strand board or plywood. In some cases, eye joists may need web stiffeners or web fillers. A hanger is a metal bracket that supports the joist or beam by connecting it to another supporting structural member. While many hangers have the same basic design, their shapes and sizes can vary. A typical face mount hanger has two header flanges two side plates, and a seat. When installing many types of hangers, fasteners are driven through holes in the header flanges, into the carrying member, and through holes in the side plates and into the carry joist. Some hangers also have top flanges. Top flanges hold the hanger in place during installation, which makes installation faster and easier. The holes in a hanger are for fasteners, such as nails, bolts, and SDS or tightened masonry screws. When the right type and number of fasteners are installed in a hanger, the hanger can support its allowable load. An allowable load is the maximum load that can be supported by a connector that's installed correctly. Slope is the incline of a roof expressed as inches of rise over inches of run. When you change the slope of something, you change the angle in a vertical direction. To skew something is to pivot it left or right around a connection point. When you skew something, you change the angle in a horizontal direction. There are two basic types of hangers, a top flange hanger and a face mount hanger. Each type has its advantages and disadvantages. Let me show you what I mean.
A typical top flange hanger needs fewer fasteners than a typical face mount hanger. Fewer fasteners mean faster installation. This is an advantage of the top flange hanger. The top flanges rest on top of a header. This limits how far down on the face of the header you can position the hanger. This is both an advantage and a disadvantage. It's an advantage because you don't have to match the position of the hanger to the height of the joist. This makes installation faster and easier. But the top flanges are also a disadvantage because the position on the face of the header is determined by the top flanges. The height of the hanger and the height of the joist have to match to ensure a flush floor or ceiling. In contrast to a top flange hanger, you can adjust the hanger position on a header when using a face mount hanger. Another disadvantage of the top flanges is that they may create bumps in a subfloor. You are responsible for correctly installing the right hanger in the right places. The designer of record is responsible for choosing which types of hangers to use and specifying where in the frame of the house you will install each hanger. There may be times when you don't know which hanger to use. If this happens, it's important that you don't install a hanger just because it's the right size. Doing this can cause life safety issues. If you don't know which hanger to use, check the plan specification documents. If they're not specific, ask the designer, engineer, architect, or specifier of record. Before you begin installing a hanger, Verify that you have correctly identified the following, the joist size, the hanger size, the hanger type, the hanger location, the fastener type, and the number of fasteners. Then, make any necessary adjustments to the header or beam, including adding web fillers and backer blocks or fastening multiple wood members together to act as a single unit. The first few steps in the installation process are the same for many top flange and face mount hangers. The first step is to measure and mark the intended location of the joist on the header so that you know where to install the hanger. The second step is to position the hanger. When joist hangers are correctly positioned, a series of joists sit at a consistent height. You position a top flange hanger differently than you position a face mount hanger. Because of the top flanges, you don't have to measure the height of the joist when installing a top flange hanger. You place the hangers so that the top flanges rest on top of the header. You have to determine the height of the joist to correctly position the face mount hanger. You can determine the joist height by using a small end cut of the joist or a wood block, snapping a location line, or measuring. When you have a top flange hanger in position, you are ready for step three. Install fasteners to the top flanges and into the top of the header. Step four for installing either a face mount or a top flange hanger is to install the header fasteners through the header flanges and into the face of the header. The side plates of a correctly installed top flange or face mount hanger are parallel. In other words, there is the same distance between the side plates at the top and bottom of the hanger. Step five is to place the joist in the hanger. There should be less than an eighth of an inch between the end of the joist and face of the header. The final step, step six, is to install the joist fasteners through the side plates and into the joist. If you're installing a hanger with a double shear feature, install nails specified for the hanger, which can be 10 penny common, 16 penny sinker, or 16 penny common nails in an angle through the domes or tabs on the side plates. The nails will go through the joist and back into the header. Beam hangers are typically heavy-duty connectors, which may require the use of screws or bolts. Just like with joist hangers, there may be times when you don't know which beam hanger to use. If this happens, don't install a hanger just because it's the right size. Doing this can cause life safety issues. To install a beam hanger, follow the joist hanger installation process. Note, however, some important differences. Because of the thickness of the steel, Top flanges of a heavy gauge top flange hanger are curved at the bend and do not have a perfect square corner. The curvature of the top flanges makes it difficult to get the hanger flush against both the top and the face of the header. Therefore, you might have to round off the corner of the supporting member. 
Some beam hangers require bolts. Before installing a bolt, you must first mark the bolt location, then drill a hole with the correct diameter all the way through the carrying and carried member. Be sure to use a washer on the wood side of the bolted connection. Following is a list of basic installation do's and don'ts that help you ensure that you install the hangers correctly. Do make sure with top flange hangers that the hanger is plumbed to the header and not kicked out. This means that the part of the hanger that sits against the header must be in contact with the header throughout the full height of the hanger. If the hanger is kicked out, push it back against the header until it's plumb and fill the triangular optional face holes to secure the hanger in position. Note that you cannot fix a kicked out hanger if the joist nails are installed. Do make sure the joist is fully seated in the hanger. Do make sure that the joist is not cut too short. There should be less than an eighth of an inch between the end of the joist and the face of the beam or header. Do make sure all recommended or specified fasteners are installed before loading the joist to beam connection. This means that you should fully install all the hangers on one story before starting construction on the story that will sit above it. Do make sure that a face mount hanger covers at least 60% of the height of the joist. Do make sure when you're installing a hanger for an eye joist that the hanger side plates reach and support the top flange of the eye joist. If they don't, you must install web fillers to prevent the eye joist from rotating. Do make sure with the eye joist you use web fillers when a hanger requires joist nails in the web area. Do fasten multiple members together so that they act as one member. If you don't fasten the members together, they don't act as one member. This weakens the overall strength of any connection to the multiple wood members. Don't toenail joist to the beam or header before installing a hanger. Toenailing can cause floor squeaks and incorrect hanger installation. Don't overspread the flanges of a hanger. Overspread flanges don't provide enough side support and can cause uneven surfaces and floor squeaks. Overspread flanges can cause the joist to roll over. Don't squeeze or pinch the top flange of an eye joist too tightly with a hanger. Don't notch the joist, beam, or header to avoid subfloor bumps unless the engineer allows it. Notching the joist, beam, or header will reduce the allowable load values of the structure. Don't cut any part of the hanger. Don't use joist nails that are too long. Joist nails should not penetrate all the way through the joist. Don't install a top flange hanger that has a bearing depth deeper than the width of the header. Don't use the wrong fasteners. Pay close attention to the gauge and length of nails required for different hangers. Don't use short joist hanger nails with double shear hangers. Don't leave fastener holes unfilled unless they are the optional triangular nail holes. Simpson's very versatile LSSU series hanger is used to attach sloped, skewed, or sloped and skewed joists or rafters to ridge beams or headers. Whether sloped up or down, skewed left or right, or a combination of both, the LSSU can accommodate joist to beam connections of up to 45 degrees in any direction. The large size hangers are LSUs and cannot be skewed on the job site and must be skewed at the factory, but they can be sloped at the job site. When using an LSSU with eye joists, remember to first add web stiffeners to the eye joists as required by the manufacturer. An LSSU series hanger has an acute flange and an obtuse flange when skewed. It also has seat nails and ob round holes. For skewed applications, there's no need to cut a skewed angle. For sloped rafters, however, you must first cut the joist to the desired slope. After finishing any necessary preparations, mark the joist or rafter location on the ridge beam or header. Then attach the hanger to the sloped or skewed end of the joist by first installing the seat nails, 
which are ten penny by inch and a half short joist hanger nails. Bend one flange to form the acute or inside angle desired and position the hanger and rafter assembly on the header. Using ten penny common nails, fill the oblong holes by hammering parallel to the joist. Using your hammer, bend the other flange back until it touches the ridge beam or header. Fill all Abron holes with 10 penny common nails. If you are using the LSSU hanger for the slope rafters that are not skewed, neither header flange should be bent. Both header flanges should be flush against the header face. With any connector that is designed to be field bent, make sure that you bend it only once. Bending the steel back and forth can crack and weaken the steel. This could cause failure. Here is a correctly installed LSSU series hanger. SUR and SUL hangers are designed for joists that need to be skewed at a 45 degree angle. These hangers are identical, except that the SUR hanger is skewed to the right and the SUL is skewed to the left. The skew angle is preset and the joist does not need to be bevel cut for the skew angle. To install, follow the same procedure used with face mount hangers. Here is a correctly installed SUR hanger. The IUS series hanger is a unique hybrid hanger for eye joists. It is versatile like a face mount hanger, but is easier and quicker to install like a top flange hanger. Also, it doesn't require joist nailing. An IUS series hanger is like a face mount hanger, but it has additional features that ease installation. For example, the IUS series hanger has set tabs on top, a snap-in teardrop, which replaces the need for joist nailing, strong grips to hold the bottom cord in position, and a starburst to secure the joist in the hanger seat. An IUS series hanger also has funnel-shaped flanges at the top to guide the joist into the hanger. To install an IUS series hanger, you follow many of the installation procedures for the face mount hanger and drive 10D common nails through the header flanges into the header. The quantity of nails required varies by hanger size. The installation is faster than that for a face mount hanger because the top set tabs hold the hanger on the header face at the right height and eliminate the need to measure and mark the hanger position. Note that when you place the joist in the hanger, you must make sure it snaps into place past the teardrops in the seat. You may have to hammer the joist to ensure this. Don't try to pull the joist out of the hanger after it has snapped into place. Also make sure that the side plates reach the top flange of the eye joist. If additional uplift is required, add web fillers and drive 10 penny by inch and a half nails to the triangular holes in the side plates. Here is a correctly installed IUS series hanger. We covered a lot in this short video about joist and beam hangers. Now you are familiar with basic terms associated with hanger installation and can identify the differences between a typical face mount and top flange hanger installation. You also know how to install joist and beam hangers correctly and can identify installation features of some of Simpson Strong Ties joist and beam hangers. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for your attention.